Hey, greetings event partners. Uh, my name is Andrew Dolan, and in this video, I just wanted to chat and share with you guys some information about the equipment that we're using to live stream some of the new events that are out there. So REC has come out with these uh, remote live events, and uh, I've been working to put some of these together. We finished one on October 24th, and I just wanted to share with the uh, world out there the setup that we have cooking to make this event possible. So number one, we're running everything through Zoom in this case, and I've got some other equipment in here that's helping me do some interesting things, such as um, putting video mixing together so we can interface it with Tournament Manager and polish it up a little bit. So uh, to help us out with this, I just want to share a little graphic here on the equipment that we're using. So check this out. I've got to stop something in the background here. The live stream is, there we go. <laughs> Sorry about that, but check this out. Uh, here is the equipment that we're using. The heart of the beast is this Black Magic Mini ATEM. And this is a video switching device that allows us to take the tournament manager feed, as well as a video feed from a camera, as well as video feeds from our uh, uh, Zoom interface where our teams can come on board. So that's the main piece here. And that's about $300. You can get it from B&H Audio, pretty slick deal. So this first laptop that we've got cooking in the upper left-hand corner, uh, that laptop is for Zoom. That's what we're running the video conferencing through. I've got a talking head camera that um, I'm speaking to you guys through. Um, a nice studio mic that's capturing my audio and an overhead camera. I'll show you how I'm using that in a little bit. And then tournament manager is set up over here on a separate laptop. So you do need two laptops to make this work. And we've got that laptop set up as an extended display. And on that extended display, we're running the tournament manager audience display overlay mode. So we can get the green screen effects and have like the in-match uh, timer and whatnot going while the event is happening. And we can stream that all on YouTube. Um, let's see, on the laptop over here in the upper left-hand corner, that one is running our uh, extended display, again, going to that video switcher. And the purpose of that is so that uh, that becomes our output on the live stream. So in Zoom, you have to set this up as a dual screen. Make sure you check the general settings and have it set up for dual screen. And that's pretty cool because then whatever's on the extended display is what it's, Zoom is going to focus on and send out in the live stream. So let's give you a, an effect or uh, an experience how this all kind, kind of comes together and works. So I'm going to switch back to uh, a different feed. Um, going to give you guys, you know, if a team dials into Zoom and they're with you during this remote live event. So check this out. I'm going to pin their image onto the second screen. All right. And there we go. Pin it to the second screen. Uh, it gets a little bit of problems if you're trying to show the same image uh, twice on the screen. So you got to be a little bit mindful and I'm still learning how to operate this a bit. But there we go. We've got a robotics team. They're on a separate Zoom account. Uh, one thing that we've done is to have them label themselves as their team number and letter. So you'll see that pop up on the uh, lower left hand corner of the screen. So that's pretty neat. They've got their camera set up and let's just pretend that it's looking at the entire robot uh, or the entire competition field. And now we can add the overlay screen to this. And if I switch this to in match, uh, so the majority of the time during these live remote broadcasts, we're gonna have this screen focused in on the team that's in their remote facility. And then we've got the overlay screen that's happening. So uh, when we go ahead and start match, we should be able to hear the audible sounds of the starting and stopping of matches, the buzzers, and uh, let's see if this works. I'm gonna start the match in three, two, one, go. Okay, so you guys were able to hear the buzzer in that case. 
it gives us that da 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 da. And now our robots are moving around scoring points. All right. So we can narrate and uh, keep things going while the match is you know, going on. We can describe what's happening when and all that good stuff. You know, they're scoring in goals. Uh, just give that announcer MC narration of what's happening. Oh, I just probably talked over the 30 second, um, 30 second timer uh, alarm, I guess. And then we're down to the final 15 seconds of this match. And in a few more seconds, you'll be able to hear the buzzer sounds. At what, so this works pretty slick because the team can use this as their cue to start and stop the robot. Okay, so we just heard the buzzer go off and the end of the match. Now, um, they can use that audible cue, that start and stop sounds to start and stop their robots manually with a competition switch or they can do it through tournament manager and all the different means uh, with another V5 controller. Of course, they have a lot of different ways they can start and stop the matches. That's pretty neat. But now with this setup, we can talk about, oh, here's your skills rankings. And I don't have anything populated in here right now, but you guys can see that's how we can run that. Um, we can show off you know, the, all the different screens that are available inside of tournament manager in this setup, we've got our in match, we can display um, logos, you know, slides, anything that we wanna have in this setup. All right, so another great thing that we can do with this setup, this configuration that Black Magic Mini ATEM is to bring in some scoring. So um, the best way I have found right now to be able to score a skills match live is using one of the tournament manager mobile apps and you know in here we can just go ahead and explain it and that's a very visual thing that really helps because the vrc hub doesn't explain the scoring very well but um, for now i've just got a camera uh over you know looking at a tablet but i think it might be nice to, to change this up and have the tablet connected to one of the hdmi inputs in this video switcher instead of what I've got cooking here. But this is a nice, very graphical uh, way to go ahead and score up the individual matches. And it will help your audience understand how skills scoring works because in the changeup game, it's not as easy or intuitive as it has been with other games. So I think this is probably one of the best ways to go ahead and do that. So um, that's a rough overview of our entire setup. Um, again, it's pretty slick because it allows us to be able to give that tournament feel, the, some of the same display screens that you would find at a tournament. We can show on the live stream while we're going along. Uh, we can talk about rankings, talk about how things are scored and give the teams that nice little banner so that when they're running the event, uh, they can see what is their in-match results. You know, they can see their start stop times. They can hear the start and stop um, sounds as well. So this is an interesting way to do it. As far as price goes to get all of the different equipment that we're talking about here, I'll go back to sharing that graphic here. Um, let's see, this is the... Uh, Equipment involved, the, the heart of the beast is that Black Magic Mini ATEM video switcher. It's really not a bad price. $300 will get you this device. And just for fun, I mean, it's kind of neat because it allows us to do picture in picture effects as well as things like fade to black and different transitions when we're going between shots. So pretty neat device for 300 bucks. It's a nice price point. Uh, the microphone, you can certainly get by without buying the studio mic, um, but I like that it creates a little better sound quality to it. Uh, this device over here is about $500, it's video assist. And uh, I like it, one of the main reasons I like having it in this setup is that I can see the sound bars going across. So it has the UV meter that's telling me how loud are things 
And if I can see it starting to get into that red where it's clipping, that might be a problem. It's a nice visual feedback for me as the event's going on to see and adjust sound levels throughout. Um, these little uh, Canon or the H D 800s or something like that. Those cameras are wonderful. They work great uh, just for giving us like the overhead shots and some of the other pieces. You guys can rig it up. Um, but not a bad setup, not a bad price point. And it allows you to put a, a finishing or a better production value, I guess, on your events. So think about that. And I guess if you guys have any questions about how this stuff works, um, feel free to reach out to me. You can reach me at andrew.dahlen, D-A-H-L-E-N, at northlandcollege.edu. So check it out and um, enjoy. Good luck this season. And thank you to all the event partners that are taking that leap of faith and going out and saying, we need uh, different ways for our students to be able to compete in, in the pandemic. And these remote live events are a great way to keep the competition rolling. So thanks to all my fellow event partners and we'll catch you later.